Okay, so we are going to look at um, the part two of this. I'm going to start with the radio frequency identification. So let's look at the radio frequency identification reader. Now, the RFID, that's the acronym for it, uses a radio wave to read and then to capture information stored on a tag. Okay, so if there are tags embedded on it, it's going to read it. Now, in some applications, the tags can be read from a distance of several meters. And this is one of the advantages it has over the barcode. Because while the barcode in, in close proximity, the RFID reads it from a far distance. Now, now the, L, the RFID tags is made up of two components essentially. We have the, micro, um, the microchip that stores and processes that information right here. And then we have the antenna on the RFID device that is used to receive and transmit that data and information. Now the tag can be passive or battery powered. Now, concerning the fact that the tax can be passive or battery powered, now let's look at the passive, let's look at the, the, the battery or the active. Now, the passive tag can use what we call a reader video wave energy to relay back information. But the battery uses a small embedded battery to power the RFID. Okay, so this is the tag here. This is the reader. This is the antenna here. The reader, and this is what the computer. Okay, I think I've got ahead. Now let's look at the uses of the RFID. It can be used in livestock tracking to track the whereabouts of your animals and the farm. It can also be used in retail. It is similar to barcode in such that, but don't, don't, don't require any form of scanning. Now, the details of such as the price can be stored on the tag and can be automatically read at the checkout. Now, the big advantage that it has over the barcode is that several tasks can be read at the same time, right? Thereby speeding up the checkout process. It doesn't, unlike barcode that you have to do it one at a time. But for the RFID, you can just quickly, right, just you and do like this, and automatically it's going to calculate the total price of every of them, which is which is a little bit which is faster, right, than the back room. For admission passing, in some team parks, the RFID cards eliminate the need to swipe or scan before rides, okay, reducing the wasting um, waiting time. Okay, you can track people in the team parks. And also certain information as well. For libraries, books can be tracked in and out automatically by readers at the library entrance. So, no need to scan um, codes or use a magnetic stripe card, making the process quicker and then more accurate. So, you can just track in and out automatically by the reader. So, let's talk about the advantage. Now, for the advantage, we have no line of sight contact is necessary. So, tasks can be read from a So, it means it can be read from a distance, okay? So, that is a good advantage. And it is a very robust and reliable technology. When we talk about robust, robust technology, let's look at it together so that we, we can have a foot of what it means. Now, it means... To describe a software that has several qualities, it means it cannot break down, right? And it it is not only affected by single application, okay? So it can hold up well under exceptional circumstances. And that's that robustness. That's what we are talking about, okay? Now another one is a very fast, a very it has a very fast reading rate compared to the barcode bi-directional data transfer which allows to read and write to take place okay 
and bug detection is possible, which is a very key advantage of the, L the LFID. It can detect several tags at the same time. The disadvantage is star collisions. That is when two signals, um, where the signals from two or more tags overlap. There's that possibility. Because LFID is radio wave, they can be relatively easy to jam or interrupt. Okay? And it's relatively easy to hack, right? By the tags. It's more expensive compared to the barcodes. Now, let's talk about the optical mark recognition. Now, for the optical mark, which is your OMR, uh, either the mark recognition or the mark reader, they used to read marks, right? For, for objectives, for survey, they used to read marks written in pen or pencil on a form. Okay? So, now, usually your objective question paper are being read uh, by this particular word machine. Right? They are being read by this particular machine or objective question. And that's why it has a structure. That's a structure that it has to follow in reading um, this particular word form. Okay? So you're either using a pen, you're either using a pencil, and then the format, right? I have a format here. Sometimes you have to just tick it and um, shade it in the way. And they give you a format in, way in which you have to shade it. Sometimes you connect a dot. Okay? Now, what are they using? They can be using questionnaires. They can be using multiple choice. They can be using voting papers and many other types. Okay? The advantages is the very fast way of imputing the result of a survey because it is fed automatically when there's no user input. Remember, remember, there's a format, and once you tick the format, the machine will automatically read it. So it's the very fast way of imputing the result of survey to the computer. Because there's no tap, there's no typing, there is more it's more accurate. There's that accuracy than key in the data manually. And of course, it's more accurate than the OCR. Just converting them into the computer. Especially if there's any form of um, the computer does not see it clearly what the person is writing. Now, it's about it that the form needs to be carefully designed to make sure the marks and shading are positioning up, up, uh, positioned correctly to gather the accurate information. So if it's not marked correctly or shaded correctly or designed correctly, the um, machine may not actually see it. Hmm. Or probably can read a wrong data. Now, there can be problems. That is, if it's not filled correctly, and I've talked about that. Sometimes, they have to be manually checked before they are read. So, which is, a both, which is both time consuming and then again, expensive. The next one is optical character recognition. Now, this simply means it converts text on hard copy into electronic form. A good example is your passport. Okay? You have your passport that helps you to actually do that. Okay? And this electronic data, into a, it converts this into electronic form that can be used in various applications, such as your word processors or your presentation softwares. Let's talk about the uses. It is used in possession of passport and identity cards. It can convert your hard copy documents into electronic form. It is used in your ANPR, which is automatic number plate recognition, and um, etc. Right? These are the very, very key things it can be used for. And even your historic newspapers and web books can also be archived, right? Prevent damage to the original as well because it's converted to the computer system. Advantages is it is more faster data entry than manually typing all the hard copy documents. Then there is no manual data entry with this here because it's converting it automatically into editable text. Okay, so that, that error is being what reduced. The advantage on the other hand is the system still has difficulty reading some handwritings and it is still not a very accurate technique. So we have to also look at that. Now let's look at comparison between the OMR and the OCR. We'll look at just a few of them that stands out. Now for OCR, it converts printed document to an editable electronic format. But for the OMR, 
It reads the position of Marx, so it's ideal for multiple choice exam paper. Okay? Another one is this method can also read handwriting, but if the handwriting is poor, then it will cause what we call a reading error. But for the OML, right, it relies on simply detecting where the marks have been made on paper. Okay? And it is being compared to what the template stored in what? In memory. Um, another thing is why OCR is more accurate than data entered to a computer by keyboard. There are still problems regarding all types of handwriting leading to inaccuracy. OMR is essentially more accurate method for reading data than the OCR. And let's talk about barcodes. Now for barcodes, they are used to read information in the form of barcodes. Now these are the barcodes. This is the barcode reader, this is the barcode scanner. Okay? Now this is the barcode, this is the barcode reader or your scanner. So the barcode, this is where it reads. Now, the readers are usually in the form of, the readers are in the form of barcode scanners and it's often built into the PS terminals in supermarket. Okay? Now, we have the handheld. Now, we have the handheld scanners or what? Or we have the what? The words. Okay? Now, use of barcodes. They can be used in supermarkets and other shops where goods are marked with the barcodes. And the barcode helps to what give that information about products which enable what we call the automatic stock control. If you probably have gone to supermarkets and you've seen um, how the positions of items on the scanner, and we'll just take that. Now, it is also used in libraries to keep track of books on loan. To do that, okay, it can be used as a safety function in many companies to ensure that electrical equipment is checked or what? On a regular basis. Advantages, on the other hand, is much faster than keying in data manually. It's used in a way of recording safety testing of components. It allows for automatic stock control. They are tried and trusted technology. It, is, it has been tried, it has been trusted, unlike the RFID that is just a new technology. Okay? Now, it's expensive to administer, not foolproof. It means back can be swapped around on items. Right? So it means it's not foolproof. Unlike the RFID that can be swapped around, uh, for the barcode is, is still right you have to still bring the items on it bring the items on it okay um or put it closely on it so it's not like you have it you just swipe around uh, it can be more easily damaged than the rfid tags or the magnetic stripe okay very important and finally i think this is the last part of it um in this video Last part. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the QR codes. Right? I think this is the latest technology because every church or every vital information goes the QR code that you just scan and they give you the information. Now, this is made up of a matrix of um, fielding dark squares on the light background. Now, a QR code consists of a block of what small squares. See the block of small squares like this, right? And um, known of known as pixels, and it can hold up to four thousand two nine six characters, almost up to seven thousand eighty nine digits. It also allows internet addresses to be encoded within the QR codes, compared to thirty digits, which is the maximum for a barcode. Now, another good thing about the barcode is that, like I said, it includes a web address on the code. Now, let's look at this. Now, because of modern smartphones and tablets, which allow internet access to on the move, 
Back codes can be scanned anywhere. This gives rise to a number of what uses advertising products, giving automatic access to websites or contact telephone numbers. You can just turn everything to a barcode, right? And when they scan it, they have access to that information at real time. So that makes it super, super easy. Hmm. It makes it easy. By using built-in cameras, and I do it in my classes as well, right? I just put in the barcode, so once you just scan it in, so it makes it easy to be able to have access to the URL to my class, etc, etc. By using built-in cameras on a mobile telephone or tablet, by downloading the QR app, so you have to download the QR app, you have to use it. So once you download the QR app, what it does is it opens your built-in camera with a smartphone and is able to scan this information and takes you um, to that platform. So how do you do it? You point your camera at the QR code. This will now process the image taken by the camera, converting the square into a format. Now, you can just do it that way, right? And then you um, ins install the browser, the QR app, and then you can now bring in that picture which is going to read it and then take it to the site. Or quality telephone. Now, they're using advertising. The content links to app. Um, they can be used for Wi-Fi authentication. It can be used to deliver drive um, deliver augmented reality, which we've seen. Um, QR codes can be used to establish virtual online stores. And uh, let's look at the advantage quickly before we call it today. Um, they can hold much more information than the normal barcodes. There are fewer errors than with barcodes. That it has the high capacity of the QR codes, which allow that. Um, which allow the use of built-in errors um, check checking system, right? So that helps to reduce a form of data redundancy. Okay. Now it's easier to read. They don't need expensive lasers or LED. Just download the app, scan it in, convert it to QR codes. It's that simple, and you can transmit transmit it either as a text message or even as an image. It is also possible to encrypt your QR code, which gives that greater product, uh, protection than traditional barcodes. Disadvantage could be if more than one QR format is available, which probably, if you're used to one, you might see another one, and probably you're not really sure. It can also be used to trans transmit malicious code, known as a target. Right, so you have to be very careful with it. Know the kinds of code, the QR codes you are scanning because it might just transmit a virus, an app you can just install, a link to an app that probably could be malicious, right? That can gain access to all information on your smartphone. Thank you very much. Now, next video, we're going to look at the third part of the input and output, which is the output device, and then we'll look at their users. Bye bye.